Good day everyone! The group of Dimapilis, Lizon, Fantasilia, and Coral presents to you their first performance task, which tackles their analysis regarding the site of the first mass here in the Philippines. So let me give you a brief background about it first. This can be traced back on Magellan's voyage in search of the Spice Islands. And if you can still remember, he first arrived in an island called Humunu here in the Philippines, which is now what we know as the Homonhon Island. It is also a well-known fact that he held a mass in celebration of the Easter Sunday, which is specifically on March 31, 1521, right? Now, the location of that mass has sparked debates because all we know is that Magellan and his fleet anchored on an island called Mazawa. Some people are claiming that it's in Butuan City, Agusan del Norte, while some argue that it's actually in Limasawa Island in southern Leyte. So let's all try to analyze whether it's really in Butuan or in Limasawa. So here are the sources that will go through analysis. The first one is of course a written account of Magellan's voyage around the world, written by Antonio Pigafetta. Mind you, he's the Italian assistant of Magellan that time, and translated by James Alexander Robertson in 1906. The second source is entitled, The Final Report of the Mojares Panel on the Butuan Limasawa Controversy on the Location of the 1521 First Easter Mass in the Philippines, or in short, the Mojares Panel, which is approved by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, or NHCP, last year. Okay, so let's start by criticizing these sources and proving its authenticity and credibility as a source. To start criticizing the external factors of the Robertson's translation, I want you to look at the page mostly composed of text. You can see the title Magellan's Voyage Around the World, and under that, you can see the original text of the Ambrosian MS. So the Ambrosian MS derives its name from St. Ambrose, the Bishop of Milan, and it is used since the last quarter of the year 300. It is used for the Ambrosian Rite, Liturgy, and Saint in the Catholic Church. Since Spain is a Catholic country in the 16th century, it is safe to say that they use the Ambrosian MS. At the lowest part, you will see the name of the publisher. It is the Arthur H. Clark Company, which is founded in 1902. To confirm the validity of this company, the year before Robertson's translation was published, they released the book of Archer Butler Hulbert entitled Historic Highways of America. You can see in the picture it is published in the year 1905 by the Arthur H. Clarke Company. In the lower right part of the picture of Ferdinand Magellan, you can see a little stamp saying Boston Public Library, and in the red enclosure there is a vivid mark of Public Library of the City of Boston. So to prove the validity, I went to the official website of the Boston Public Library and went to its history. If you visit their website, it confirms that this library was established during the 1848 years before the translation became their property, and it is still present today. Lastly, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of Robertson's translation and R.A. Skelton's translation of Pigafetta's account. They are very similar with each other such as the placement of the island, and this validates that they just based it in the same journal. For the internal criticism of Robertson's translation, on the other hand, let's answer these questions. When was it translated? It was translated in 1906. So you might be wondering why is it so far from 1521, right? This will be answered in the second question. How close was the translator to Pigafetta? Pigafetta's written journal about Magellan's voyage had actually gone through many trials and errors when it comes to its translations. In 1797, Dr. Carlo Amoretti discovered the lost Italian manuscript of Pigafetta on Magellan's voyage. He wasted no time and immediately modernized the Italian of Pigafetta's text. However, he committed the sin of editing the precious document almost beyond recognition in places. So the next person who translated it was Lord Stanley of Alderley. However, he had omitted passages in his transcript that are important to ethnologists. So the most useful translation was the one by Andrea da Mosto. However, errors, although not as many as the past translations, are soon found as well. Thus, here is the version of James Alexander Robertson, who had preserved the original text of Pigafetta in one side of his translated account and with the English translation on the other. 
So basically, people can compare his translation to that of the original version. Now, who was the recipient? Only 350 copies were published and all for the purpose of being studied. Students, researchers, and historians are the target recipients of the translation. Now, are there any biases? It is mentioned in the preface of that book that the peculiarities of the manuscripts have been carefully preserved, even to the spacing, except that paragraphs in the original have a hanging indention, and the punctuation at the end of paragraphs is usually a dash or a series of dashes and dots. Also, our group will be disregarding the footnotes and will analyze the material as itself to avoid the influence of the translator. Here are our external criticism for the Mara Spandal source. Based on its physical characteristic, it is evident that the first page is the scan of the approval of NHCP with all of those signatures and stamp from NHCP and the chairperson of the Mahara's panel. The remaining pages, on the other hand, were that of the soft copy of the report. The language used in the report has a perfect syntax, semantics, and pragmatics, meaning to say the words, sentences, and its context all make sense and are comprehensive. This leads us to deduce that the people behind this panel are educated beings. The dates mentioned in the Maharaj panel report are all cross-checked as well, and are found to be consistent with factual dates. Lastly, this report has been approved and received by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, hence it had gone through beta tests and had been copied and cross-checked multiple times before being published to the public. The report of the Mojares panel, headed by Dr. Resil Mojares, guided the latest ruling made by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines regarding the controversy on the 1521 Easter Sunday Mass. Their findings were used by the NHCP to create the Resolution No. 2 series of 2020, which was signed and approved by the board on July 15. So, how do we test the authenticity of the source based on the date of its publication? For this kind, the fact that the report was made almost only a year ago makes it more reliable. Latest revisions and conclusions are the better basis for some matters. Take for instance, when we are searching for related literature and studies for our research papers, what we do is that we check if the year is matched with the scope required before including them on our list. The later, the better. However, on the other hand, we must also see how close was the author to the subject being evaluated because this increases the accuracy of the information we are presented with. Obviously, the NHCP and the panel it created do not have direct relation to the facilitators of the first Easter Sunday Mass, but they did base to historical accounts that the people involved has made. Clearly. NHCP and the Mojares panel are still authentic sources because it is their responsibility to resolve the problems that are concerning the nation's history. It is their job and they have the power to conduct such for the sake of scholarship and not for any personal agenda. The conclusions of the panel obviously is an advantage for the pro Limasawa proponents and an honor for the people of Southern Leyte. This is one of the reasons why there's no member of the panel came from there, nor Butuan. It is for the result to be purely a product of integrity and thorough analysis. Aside from them, of course, the education sector will also benefit from this report as it will be providing a clear and accurate conclusion that is to be disseminated to the learners. So, are there any biases observed in this material? Well, their examination of this matter was reopened by the NHCP to give consideration to the arising primary sources that were not included in the past investigations. Both parties were also given enough time to defend their points and as what we have mentioned earlier, no member of the panel of researchers and historians came from Agusan del Norte nor Southern Leyte to avoid any alterations of the truth. With this, we can deduce that there are no biases with this material. By now, you are familiar of our sources, but let us discuss what we can expect and what is the content of each source. 
The first one is Robertson's translation of Pigafetta's account of the Magellan's voyage around the world. It is the expedition while discovering different islands such as the Philippines. It started with Antonio introducing himself and mentioning Lord Filippo de Villers Lisley Dam. But the Philippines was not mentioned until page 99, which was the first discovery of our country, specifically in the island of Samar. The first mass is from page 119 to 129, with the last paragraph saying that they held it in the island of Mazawa. This book is composed of 273 pages in total. The second one is the Maharis panel. This panel is composed of Philippine historians and came together to discuss the controversial First Easter Sunday Mass. The NHCP conducted several panels in the past, for the 1980, 1995, 2008, and now 2020. But this report mainly focused on new found evidences and argument and site inspections. Both Limasawa and Butuan are able to present their sites and it was carefully analyzed by the historians, providing categories for each. It also contains the conclusion, recommendation, and the verdict of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Let's first do the content analysis on the Butuan side. The first point is the Balanghay mentioned in Pigafetta's account. As you can see in these pictures, the Balanghay had been mentioned several times. When the king of the Mazua Island approached Magellan and the other explorers while riding in the Balanghay, and when the explorers were staying at the Mazua Island for seven days, if this be analyzed, it is a hint that the Balanghay is a popular vessel in the Mazua Island because even the king is using it. The same goes to how many times gold were mentioned. The king of the island owns many golds. He also wears it. His house is full of it. He can easily offer it for barters and more. This gives us the impression that the island has many golds. Lastly, if Masawa is really Butuan, the legwas written in Pagafeta's journal is close to being accurate to the leagues of today. As you can see, Masawa to Gatighan has 20 legwas, while Gatighan to Zu Zubu or Cebu has 15 legwas, meaning to say, the distance of Masawa to Cebu is 35 leagues if we combine the available information. If we convert the 35 leagues into miles, we will get 120 miles. Now, the distance between Butuan and Cebu is 147 miles, which is close to Pigafetta's 120 miles. While on the other hand, the distance between Limasawa and Cebu is only 87 miles. For the context analysis of the Butuan side, on the other hand, this is the first claim of the proponents of Butuan. Limasawa has no anchorage because that time, according to Hydrographic 482, which is a chart designed to portray what is safe for navigation, Limasawa is an island fringed by a narrow, steep reef of which the depths are too great to afford anchorage for large vessels. Basically, the shore in Limasawa during that time is too sharply angled or inclined and is hard to be anchored on. The hydrographic chart also said that Limasawa has a lee shore at the east during that time. We all know that Magellan's fleet left Homonhan Island in a west-southwest course, which means that they are now coasting along the eastern side of Leyte. Look at the picture. If they really went to Limasawa, they will be anchoring on its east which is said to be a lee shore. Every seafarer knows that a lee shore is dangerous and very destructive because the enemy is the wind. Pertain to the picture once again. Now the story is claimed to make no sense if the first mass was really in Limasawa. Magellan's fleet stayed in the so-called Mazawa Island for seven days. When they left, Pigafetta said that they laid their course towards the northwest and passed by Ceylon, Bohol, Kanighan, Bye Bye, and Gatighan. Refer to the compass to know where the direction of the fleet went. It's in the northwest, right? Now let's plot it in Limasawa. If they left Limasawa and went northwest, they should not pass Ceylon anymore because Ceylon is just right beside Limasawa. Basically, the event in Pigafetta's journal does not make sense if the fleet really was anchored in Limasawa. Next, Butuan is now the site of at least nine excavated Balanghay relics, which was also mentioned earlier by Mr. Corral, right? In addition, Limasawa has no significant archaeological relics or Balanghay tradition. Lastly, for the context analysis of the Butuan side, gold relics are also found in Butuan, and we all are aware that the Kingdom of Butuan used to exist, right? 
During the pre-colonial period of the Philippines, Butuan is known for mining gold and trading across the sea. Basically, its society had clearly revolved around the precious metal. It's like what was mentioned in the content analysis earlier. So now let's proceed to the content and context analysis for the Limasawa Island. On Pigafetta's journal, the site of the first Easter Sunday Mass has a recorded latitude of 9 degrees 40 minutes north, which he pertained to as the Masawa Island. In both of his codices, there is an observed consistency with this given measurement in spite of the problem that Robertson has mentioned in the Amoretti transcription. The aforementioned island, if we will be going to look and based on the footnote, is indicated as the Limasawa today. Also, according to the report of the panel, subsequent transcribers and translators of the codices say that the island referred to by the coordinates is that so-called Limasawa. Pro Butuan proponents rely on Demafra's account regarding its location. They rely on his statement saying 15 leagues below Butuan and the circumference of 3 to 4 leagues. They point out that this statement can only mean that the mass was held in Butuan. But we should be aware that his accounts were not written by him. He was merely reminiscing and his account volume was edited and published by Antonio Blasquez and Delgado Aguilera. Mistranslations are also present. The 15 leagues below Butuan should be 15 leagues north of Butuan, while circumference is circled, making the hectares of the land from 3,900 to 700 hectares only, pointing more towards Limasawa. As the panel inspected the site where the first mass allegedly took place according to the Butuan proponents, they arrived into the following observations. First, Mount Panaytayan is 45 minutes away by foot on the seashore. Second, Mount Mingaso is 30 to 45 minutes away by car from the shoreline, making them impossibly be the site where the cross was erected because it will be difficult for Magellan and his men to carry a wooden cross passing steep and rocky trails. Dr. Carlos Madrid also pointed out that the materials found in this place do not seem to be 16th century vintage. Meanwhile, as the panel visited Limasawa, Dr. Madrid identified that the easternmost and highest of the two summits, which has a wider view of the horizon in all sides, is the most probable site of the erecting of the wooden cross. Continuing the site inspection by the Mojares panel, they tried to confirm Dr. Borinaga's presentation. His arguments are, instead of Barangay Magallanes on the right side of Limasawa, where the said leisure is present and the current location of the National Shrine of the First Mass, Barangay Triana on the west side of Limasawa was the real location. Additionally, the hill mentioned in Pigafetta's account where they planted a cross is said to be at the Sao Point. Dr. Barinaga also argued that when you visit the Sao Point, the three islands seen by Pigafetta are present. To analyze these arguments, the Mojaras panel visited the location. In Barangay Triana, they confirmed that the Sao Point is easily accessible by the Magellan's crew and the three islands of Camigin, Bohol, and Caraga are visible proving that Dr. Borinaga's arguments are plausible. Due to a storm, the San Cristobal ship had been separated from the fleet. This occurrence brought Villalobos and his men to the Limasawa Island. As the panel revisited the documents of his expedition, it was found out that they stayed in there for two months and there is actually no accounts that they struggled finding provisions and resources. This invalidates the argument of the pro that Limasawa cannot sustain the needs of its visitors during the 16th century. It was actually prosperous enough. There are two expeditions who tried to retrace Magellan's steps in his voyage around the world. The first one being Samuel Elliot Morrison in 1971, who used Francisco Albo's journal as his guide. The second one is naval engineer Ignacio Fernandez Vial, who used the exact replica of the Victoria, the ship used by Magellan and equipped with 16th century navigational tools, in 2006. The Mojares panel was able to get a, the unpublished copy of Vial's documents, 
where they found a stopover in Limasawa. In the expedition of both Morrison and Vial, Limasawa was identified as the site of the first Easter Sunday Mass. The Maharis panel noted that the navigational coordinates during the 16th century were just estimates. The people of those times had no accurate way of determining the latitude and longitude since it is in the 18th century when the marine chronometer was first developed. In a study in Bulgaria on the year 2016, the coordinates of Pico Theta were compared with the coordinates measured using a computerized system. And guess what? There is only a 0 degree 16 minutes difference between Pico Theta's latitude and the coordinates presented in the aforesaid study. If we will be comparing with the Butuans, which is in the 8 degrees 56 minutes north latitude, we can see that Limasawas is still closer. We put together two pictures from Robertson's translation to examine the location of Mazawa. In the first photo, Mazawa is in the uppermost part, but we inverted it to be coherent with the current map that is why the second photo you will see Mazawa is in the lowest part. Trying to make sense of the picture, we searched for the Philippines in the Google map and found several similarities. If you focus on the arrow, you will see Cebu, which is called Zubu in Figafeta's account. As we zoom in, we can see Mactan, in between Cebu and Bohol. Now look at the pictures. These three islands are present and close to one another. Leyte, which is also called Ceylon, is also visible. As you can see, Figafeta is fairly accurate with the size of the island, except Mactan, which is larger in his picture. Though there are some mishaps, the three little islands near Leyte are also visible in our present map. But where is Butuan? Butuan is included in Mindanao, which makes it a part of a large island. Comparing the size of Mindanao to the size of Mazawa in the picture, it is very large. Mindanao is larger than Cebu and Bohol, but Mazawa in Pigafeta's account is not. Now, where is Limasawa? Limasawa is a small island just below Leyte. As mentioned earlier, Mactan's size is not accurate, but Mactan is a historical place during the Magellan's expedition. It is possible that Pigafetta makes small islands larger because of its significance in their voyage, explaining why Mazawa or Limasawa is larger in his account. Now let's synthesize both sides. How do the proponents of Butuan argue regarding this issue? Here are the codes that we were able to collate. Belanghai relics and gold artifacts which fall under the subcategory of physical materials. We also have these descriptive codes. Limasawa has no anchorage. Limasawa has a dangerous shore and the almost accurate leagues between Cebu and Mazawa and Cebu and Butuan. These on the other hand fall under the subcategory logical claims. We categorize these two subcategories simply as assumptions. Because the research has that were done for the claims of the pro Butuan were not able to prove anything. So our theme for this is basically the side of the Probutuan presents sound assumptions. On the other hand, how did the proponents of Limasawa argue regarding this issue? The codes are good harbor on the western side, Limasawa has enough resources in the Villalobos expedition. These descriptive codes fall under the subcategory technicalities of the location. The other codes were coordinates close to Pigafetas, retraced Magellan's voyage, and the old point as the hillside. These codes fall under the subcategory proven claims. We categorize these two subcategories as results of study because all past and recent researches happen to prove these claims. Thus, the theme for this one is the side of the Proli Masawa presents proven data. If we're going to talk on whose side has the more sound arguments, we can say that it's Butuan, right? However, if we're talking about scientific evidences, Limasawa has it. Are we going to ignore proven and tested claims for sound assumptions? We might already have the gist on what our final say on this will be. However, this is not the only reason we took into consideration for our conclusion. Let I and Joy expound on our conclusion even more. When we were all in the lower year, we were thought that Limasawa is the site of the first Easter Sunday Mass and this is the reason why we in the group assumed that it is really Limasawa until the end. But honestly, we still got kind of confused while on the process because the Probutuans also has a point. However, 
after a thorough analysis of the information that we have gathered and in our group's viewpoint, we have concluded that Limasawa is the site of the first Easter Sunday Mass of 1521. This decision was not based on our initial knowledge, but rather its bases are as follow. First, there are no scientific evidences that would verify that the artifacts found in Butuan date back on the 1500s. If we will try to recall, Dr. Carlos Madrid mentioned that the materials found in the place do not even seem to be 16th century vintage as the pro Butuan claims. What if it is a relic of something not associated with the Magellan expedition? Moreover, as one of the flaws of their claims, by using the artifacts found at the shore as an evidence, we can argue that the tidal waves might have played a part in washing the artifacts onto the shore. Proli Masawa's point, on the other hand, are more definite as it was based on the coordinates that came from Bigafetta. His measurements, as you can, if you can still remember, only has a zero degree, 16 minutes difference from the computer-based recorded latitude in a study in Bulgaria. Second, the result of the site inspections conducted matches with Pigafetta statements. The panel have found problems with the site that the pro one proponents have argued, unlike for the Limasawa, which after observations can be claimed as a probable site of the planting of the cross. Third, this re-examination opened in 2018 was the fourth inquiry and the panels created always arrived with Limasawa as their conclusion. In spite of that, we cannot argue that the panels have been biased because in the first place, no one of them is from Agusan del Norte nor Southern Leyte. In addition, they paid close attention and examination to both parties. Lastly, and the most important, is that the latest report by the Mojares panel, which was adopted by the NHCP, is acknowledged by our government. For the consequences, um, of course, it was probably an honor for the people of Southern Leyte when Limasawa was declared as the site of the first Easter Sunday Mass in the country. The ruling of the NHCP definitely created a notion of how high Limasawa's historical value is and with that, it could directly affect the place through the promotion of tourism in Limasawa Island and for the whole Southern Leyte. Aside from Southern Leyte, the sectors with relation to this matter, including the education sector, surely benefited from this because the resolution of this historical controversy means clarifications of confusions for the learners. On the other hand, this is actually a disadvantage for the pro and proponents and somehow to Agusan del Norte, but as suggested by the Mojares panel, they could still search for the place's other historical significance. Thank you all for being here today and taking the time to patiently listen to what you have to say. We wish you all a blessed day. Stay safe. A side-by-side -side comparison of the Robertson's translation, Robertson's translation. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of Robertson's translation, Robertson's translation. The external factors of the Robertson's translation. Dr. Borinaga also argued are which is approved by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines Dads are too great to afford anchorage for lodge 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 For the internal criticism discovered the lost Italian manuscript of Pigape and the manuscript